Wow, look at that hair. Oh, my goodness. There we go. All right, howdy, guys. So, as you know, I'm just going to put my hair above the thing so you can't see it. As you know, I've been working on the house, which is why I'm a little bit late with this video, trying to get my shirt all ready to roll. Now, this video is going to go into some case law. Now, normally I don't case law because I feel like it's above the average reading level of what people want to actually learn about. However, I feel like I want to elevate it a little bit and go into something a little bit higher. Now, I'm going to keep it simple and fun, but we're going to be specifically talking about uh, Ninth Court, uh, Ninth Circuit, rather, uh, United States Court of Appeals, uh, Kathleen M. Wallen, or Whalen, versus John G. McMullen. What happened in this tragic, tragic situation? In this particular video, because we have to keep it short, because after this video, I answer calls from people. Um, in this particular video, and I have to find a phone charger in between that video and now, we're going to go through literally the tactics that are used by people with badges who are investigating you on behalf of the Social Security Administration. So put another way, what you need to know is that we're going to be going through what they call uh, the ruse, the thing that they do, the trick that they use on disabled people to get disabled people to open up and talk to the investigator to give information that normally they would not give. Let me give you a quick background on this claim. Please remember to like, subscribe, and leave five-star reviews. Here we go. Okay, I'm just going to read you the quick summary. While investigating Kathleen Whalen for fraud related to her application for Social Security benefits, Washington State Patrol Officer John McMullen gained both her cooperation and entrance into her home by requesting her assistance in a fictitious criminal investigation. Okay, so a uh, patrol officer, uh, Washington State, pretended and created a fake criminal investigation scenario that he was seeking this disabled person's help to go ahead and undercover things that might be helpful in this fake made-up investigation. Okay. During this investigation, McMullen secretly videotaped Whalen, the disabled person, both outside and inside her home. No criminal charges were ever lodged against Whalen. But the Washington Disability Determination Services Division of the Washington Department of Social and Health Services, right, classic DDS, used at her Social Security hearing the footage surreptitiously. That just means like the footage was secretive, like they, they took it when she didn't know what was going on. Surreptitiously filmed inside her home. Now, let me break that down real quick so you understand how absolutely disgusting this is. First off, they're there to investigate whether or not she committed fraud. The level of fraud they're investigating is whether or not she needed her wheelchair or not. She claimed that she did. She had a prescription for it from her doctor. And then basically they said, well, maybe there's other things in this file that say that she doesn't need a wheelchair. So we're going to send an investigator over in 2012 to go ahead and review this person. Okay. Ultimately, this claim was all decided on October 30th, 2018. Uh, what happened was basically uh, the question before the court was, did the claimant uh, essentially, or did McMullen, the officer, the patrol officer, abuse, abuse his privileges going forward and investigating this person and therefore create essentially uh, this bad fruit of evidence, evidence that shouldn't and couldn't be used as a part of her social security disability hearing. Let's roll over here. This is specifically the ruse that basically they play with disabled people. That's why this is so absolutely terrible, so absolutely horrific. So if you're wondering, like, if a police officer comes up to you and is telling you about this crime, this situation, this problem, and I know my hair is terrible, I'm sorry, I was working next door in the house, but <clears throat> the bottom line is if a police officer or somebody with a badge or an investigator comes up to you and they're like, hey, can I tell you about this problem? Can you help me out with this problem? If you are on disability benefits, be very, very careful. I'll read the paragraph here. McMullen, right? That's the officer. Declared, when conducting investigations, I do not enter a person's home in order to conduct a search of the residence. But he did in this instance. The purpose of my communication with any individual is to speak with and observe them in order to obtain information regarding their physical, mental, and emotional faculties slash responses. To do so, McMullen and other CDIU, 
you know, the, the units, the people that are paid for on behalf of the SSA through the Office of Inspector General to follow you around. Investigators commonly employ a ruse. A ruse. A ruse. All right, here we go. They introduce themselves as law enforcement officers, but conceal the purpose of their encounter from the benefits claimant. So they tell them who they are, but they don't tell them why they're there. McMullen testified that the CDIU investigators use this ruse to engage okay, with the subject of their investigation the majority of times, and that it is very seldom they do not. So they create a fake scenario where they're the little princess, and they act like they need help, and then they go to the disabled person and say, save me with my investigation. And then the disabled person goes, I will save you because I feel bad for you because I'm disabled and I understand what it's like to be like that. Starting to see how disgusting this is? Cool. McMullen testified. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, he also testified that he enters a claimant's home a lot. Remember, at the very beginning of this, he said, I do not enter a, per enter a person's home in order to conduct a search. Right? Because conducting a search in somebody's home is essentially a whole, you have to have certain things, you know, you have to have certain levels of, you know, uh, insight as to the type of crime that's being committed and how likely it's being committed, you know, probable cause, things like that. So in this instance, he's saying that I don't enter their home to do a search. I just enter their home and secretly videotape while I'm in there. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he also testified that he enters the claimant's home a lot, estimating that he did so in 70 to 80% of the investigations that he does. Absolutely disgusting. The CDIU investigators conceal the purpose of the investigation to observe the subjects functioning outside of the clinical and or examination setting while she is not aware of that. Functioning is actually being scrutinized. Okay. So what's here is a story of an investigator who over and over again abuses the good cause nature of a disabled person who's been in a shit situation, who essentially gets it, does not want, for example, this officer to be left out in the cold. So they let them in to their house while talking because he's mastered the way of getting in. And I'm going to do another video specifically on how they get in. And the problem with this is that the disabled are then stuck with tons of usually two cameras on the person, two cameras, secret body footage. And uh, these are concealed cameras, two cameras worth of footage. And in this case, one of them died 45 minutes in. the other one recorded the entire thing. So essentially, what they do is, as an investigator, he went in there, he looked around, he saw that her wheelchair had blankets on it. They use that evidence against her. They use that evidence against her. So what you have to know is, and I remember I have to keep this video very short because we need to get to the questions. We always run over with that. If some type of investigator actually approaches you, with almost extreme certainty, it is very likely a CDIU person there who knows you're receiving disability benefits and, and is investigating fraud. Now, when I say fraud, a lot of people mentally from a legal standpoint say, whoa, that's like big bank fraud. That's like, you know, robbing a bank or doing an industry thing or stealing purses from, you know, old women and then using their credit cards and frauding them and or, you know, holding something against somebody else and doing, you know, where they're, they're blackmailing them or something like that. Oh, you know, the standard by which they used for this claim was that they didn't think she needed a wheelchair, even though her doctor prescribed one. And as a result of that, they sent somebody to her door who kind of like one of those sleazy dating people that like knows how to date a lot of women and dates older women to go ahead and get their money and yada yada. One of those sleazy people figured out a way to get into her house by using the law as a blanket cover to go ahead and convince her that she could trust him and he could trust her and they could talk about things. In fact, so much 
that this disabled person tried to turn in somebody who she thought was committing a crime by using somebody else's uh, information, okay? So bottom line here is this. It's not a good situation. We're going to be doing a lot of videos specifically on what happened here. I need you to understand that. There are two types of scenarios when it comes to CDI units. There's the one where you never interact with them. And trust me, they know which claimants they're going to interact with and which ones they're not. And then there's the claimants where they interact with them. Do not be foolish enough to think that when somebody comes up to you with an investigation and you are a disabled person, that you are not the person of interest, even when they directly, as law enforcement, lie to you. Badge in hand, lie to you. That's exactly what it did here. They even have phrasing for the types of lies that they use because it's common practice. All right, guys, so here's the deal. We're keeping this video short. In about five minutes, I'm going to go ahead, pop over, get the next video started, and then you can call in to go ahead and ask whatever questions you want. We're going to try and do as many as we can tonight without wearing me completely out. That means I will be obtaining some ice cream and a nice drink. Keep me you know, happy throughout this. With that said, please remember, when you call in on the next video, keep it to about five minutes. And when you first call in, tell me what your legal question is. No story mode. Everybody loves to go into story mode and tell me about a unicorn. No story mode. Also, don't use your real name. Remember, at the law firm from nine to five, that's when I'm working with claimants. I'm in hearings. I'm interacting with the clerks of the judges, et cetera. Don't call if you're already receiving benefits. Don't call if you're somebody who has no intention of applying for benefits during the nine to five. I have to work with the clients during that time. If you do call and then scream at one of the employees at the firm because I can't answer your question right then and there, it makes it harder for me to justify doing these videos where I answer questions, especially when they're not very high view videos. Like they're, they're not high view videos. I do them because I know that they help the community. They don't help the numbers much. They really don't. So, and the employees are super pissed off about them. So please remember nine to five, if you want to apply for disability benefits, totally cool. Call the number. If you are, you know, basically already have applied, you have an attorney that's not doing what they're supposed to be doing. You have a hearing coming up. You're like, what am I going to do? That's fine. You can call me. But if you already have disability benefits, Thursday night, 8.30ish to 10, that's when we usually run questions because I do an intro video first. All right. I will catch you in five minutes at the next hearing or at the next video. And uh, you'll see it. Uh, it'll be in the live section to go ahead and start it. Now, remember, please remember to like, subscribe, and leave five-star reviews. Easiest way to leave a five-star review, you just go to Google and you type in Disability Resolution uh, Florida. It'll pop right up, five-star review, and you're good to go. All right, guys, I'll catch you a little bit later, five minutes. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye.